get started. This is going to cover, this isn't going to cover like an uh, 18 year old shoulder. It's really 40 and up kind of a shoulder talk, okay, from rotator cuff to impingement to arthritis and different options we have out there from non operative to operative um, management. If you choose, you know, surgery, we're going to talk about that, but there's a lot of non surgical. 90% of what I see is non-operative. I, you know, we see a lot of patients, 90% of them are non-operative. We get you the majority of stuff non-operative. So, when we talk about shoulder symptoms, some, sometimes there's pain, sometimes there's loss of motion, sometimes there's pain with loss of motion, sometimes there's weakness. So there's a combination, and every shoulder is different. Every shoulder is not, it's not apples to apples, it's apples to oranges. You know, people come in and say, my, my buddy has this problem, I think that's what I have. Well. It's not all the same, and every injury or every pathology or injury in the shoulder is different, and sometimes things take longer or faster than maybe your neighbor, so we always have to keep that in mind. Um, we're going to talk about rotator cuff tears, we're going to talk about ones that are repairable and ones that aren't repairable, and what we can do for that if we need to do something about it. Arthritis and people who have arthritis and a rotator cuff tear, so it's a different beast. Um, Overall treatment, and we're going to talk about all of these, but overall treatment is number one activity modification. You know, if certain activities bother you and you're willing to give that up, give it up. You can do that. It's your, it's your option. We're going, to, we're going to be a team. When you come to my office, we're going to talk about options, but in the bottom line, it's you who get to decide because it's your shoulder and you're going to decide what you want to do. Um, we always start with physical therapy, or majority of the time we start with physical therapy. There's a few things we don't do physical therapy with, but majority we try that, whether it's at home or formal therapy with a uh, certified therapist, um, to make sure that you're getting the best treatment for that. Um, a lot of times we'll use injections like cortisone to decrease inflammation. It's not going to fix the problem, but it, it alleviates symptoms and it let you go on with your life and do the activities and it's safe, then we're going to do that. Uh, biologics, people hear about biologics. What are biologics? It's using tissue or, you know, to help, uh, help with the quality, whether it's PRP where we draw blood from you, spit it down and inject it to help stimulate healing or stimulate recovery. Uh, Bone marrow aspiration, we take bone marrow immature cells and we inject it into areas to help stimulate healing. Um, and then we use grafts sometimes, whether it's synthetic graft, man-made, or cadaveric from someone else as a patch to augment, to help support, to improve your quality and uh, recovery. Um, and then, you know, obviously you can incorporate all of those with surgery or surgery with biologics. And we're going to talk about all of that. Um, so treatment options, obviously we already talked about non-surgical, lifestyle changes, physical therapy, medications, injections. And we talk about all of this stuff every single time people come in. Um, and then obviously the PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. Uh, we, we come in the office, we, we draw blood from you in the office, we spin it down, and we take a portion of that and re-inject it into the area to help stimulate uh, healing or decrease inflammation so you can function. It's more of a natural treatment versus a cortisone. Uh, bone marrow we already talked about, and then the patches, whether they're allograft or synthetically made. So this is a normal shoulder. Here's the ball, here's the socket. You know, someone comes in with this, no arthritis, but they could have a rotator cuff tear. They could have what we call impingement or bursitis or tendonitis. Those are all kind of interchangeable terms. This is a, uh, an axillary view. Here's the ball, here's the socket. Uh, there is no cartilage wear there. So this patient doesn't have any arthritis. Obviously there could be other pathology, but it's not arthritis. Um, so impingement, like I mentioned, these terms are interchangeable. Bursitis, tendonitis, tendinosis, and you hear, well, my friend says I have impingement, but now you're saying I have tendonitis. We're just using the same. We're just using different words. Um, you'll see pain with overhead activity, reaching to your back, uh, repetitive motions. It doesn't have to be from trauma. It could be from stuff you normally do and you just get some, the tendons getting like pinched and then inflamed. I always think of it, it's like your shoulder lives in a certain space, you know, like, you know, you have a, a basement and you have eight foot ceilings and then you, you lower the ceilings on it and then it, it's hard to get around and it gets, gets irritated. And this can be acute, you can have it just real acute, meaning it just happened, or it can be a chronic problem. 
So conservative, like I mentioned, activity modifications, over-the-counter anti-inflammatories. Sometimes I'll give stronger anti-inflammatories. 90% of this we can get better. I always tell every patient, I probably said it 20 times a day, cortisone shot in therapy, we get this better. Rarely do I operate on impingement. Usually if I'm going to operate on someone with impingement, there's under other pathology like a cuff tear or a biceps or something like that that's causing the real pain. 90 plus percent, 99 percent of this I can get better with therapy. But if we're going to do surgery, it's to go in, remove the bursitis, the inflammatory tissue, maybe shave off a the bone to kind of open the space instead of uh, six foot ceilings in your basement, you have 10 foot ceilings. Um, and then post surgery, sling for comfort, you know, resume activity six to eight weeks. So if you look, this is like a bone spur, you know, here's your tendon, the space is narrow, and then we just go in and remove a little bit of that bone to kind of open, give it some breathing room so the tendon can breathe. So rotator cuff tears. And everyone probably has heard of it, right? It's rotator cuff, it's not rotator cup. And the rotator cuff is four tendons in the shoulder and they help balance the ball in the socket. So without your rotator cuff, the ball won't balance in the socket and it'll start riding up high and the bones will rub and then it causes pain. Um, there's different sizes. You know, there's small, medium, large, massive tears. Some are retracted, meaning it's not only just tore, but it's torn and it's pulled back like a rubber band. Um, Tissue quality matters. You know, do you have healthy tissue and you just have a small tear, or is it tissue quality poor? Um, it could be acute, meaning you could have had right there you fell, have a tear, you see it on MRI, you can tell it's a new tear, fresh, tissue good, or you could have a chronic tear, never bothered you, and then with time it started bothering. Or you could have a combination, like you've had this tear for a while, never really bothered you, had no idea, and then you fall and now it becomes a problem. Um, and then I, when we look at these tears, so every tear is different and every treatment's different and every rehab's different. Like, like I said, it's not apples to apples, it's apples to oranges. And health matters. Are you a smoker? Well, healing is a problem. Smokers. Are you diabetic? Healing can be a problem. You know, is it a re-tear? Is it, you know, you had surgery before and you retore it? Now that's a problem because anytime you have more than one surgery, it's a little harder. Um, previous surgeries. Are you non-compliant? You know, are you following directions? Are you able to do the therapy? Do you understand the therapy? Are you doing it at home? Do you have the right support system? Those things matter in all the recovery. We have to talk about those things. Because if you expect just to have surgery and you're going to be fine, that isn't going to work. So treatment for this, a lot of times we don't have to operate on. You know, 60% of people over the age of 70 have a rotator cuff tear of some type. And we don't operate on 60% of people over the age of 70. You know, so most of the time we don't have to operate on it. Most of the time we can treat them conservatively, like we talked about. Um, and um, you guys will be sick of me saying it, but it's activity modification, anti-inflammatories, cortisone therapy. We can get most of those better without surgery. Uh, but we may recommend surgery if it doesn't work out. And then we can do standard repair, and we'll show some images of that. Or we can do repairs with augmentation, meaning like a patch, whether it's cadaveric or it's uh, synthetic. So this is a normal rotator cuff. And when I explain the, road, the shoulder, I always talk about it as two levels. We're like in a two level house, all right? And the first floor is the glenohumeral joint. That's where the ball and socket joint. And when I look up at the ceiling, that's the rotator cuff. And then when I go to the second floor, the floor is the rotator cuff. So the, the, the rotator cuff separates the first floor from the second floor, just like at your house. So this is really healthy tissue. So this is a very small tear, you see it here, I'm probably just going to kind of clean it up. You know, it's kind of your genes are frayed, I tell people, just like your genes are frayed, I'm just going to, so you're not stepping on it, it's not pinching. Right. This is a bigger tear, I hope you can, can you see that? Okay, this is the tendon here, this is the ball. I'm on the second floor now and I'm looking down at the hole. This, this tissue needs to be over here, and it's not. So that's a decent sized tear, but that tissue isn't bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a screw in the bone. You know, I'm just, I'm like a laborer. Put a screw in the bone. On the end of that screw, go ahead, yeah, is fishing line. I'm going to pass that suture right around that tendon and I'm going to tie it down. And that, so you can see the, the sutures there. Just tying it down, bringing that tendon back to that bone. I prepare the bone, make it bleed a little bit so your body heals it. You know, and if you're healthy, you know, 
relatively good shape or you know not, you know smokers obviously have a little bit more problem healing diabetics have a little more problem healing retailers have a little more problem healing but overall small tear you should do quite well and then we do that we'll talk about therapy in a little bit so this is a little bigger tear tissue is not too bad but if I look at these edges they're nice and smooth like so it's probably been there a while kind of like glass on the beach you know someone broke glass you step on you cut your foot it's been there for 20 years it's smooth right like a rock so I kind of see that smooth that's probably been there for a while but this is a larger tear so when we repair this all of this has to heal to that bone so you know some of it might heal but if not all of it you're going to have a partially healed tendon you know so our, we, our goal is to get it all to heal but that doesn't always the case especially in a chronic tear Go ahead. So we're going to do the same thing, but if you look here, I have three anchors there, and you won't see this, but I actually have probably six anchors here, and all this, each anchor has two, four stitches come out of it, I'm going to pass all those sutures through that tendon and bring it down, okay? So that's afterwards. So this patient, I might move a little slower. This patient may take a little bit longer. This patient is different than that first patient. So large tear augment. So this is a big tear, but this tissue quality, I had a little concern with it. A little bit of chronic tear. So what we're going to do, go ahead, man. This is a dermal, this is cadaveric tissue from somebody else. We're going to cover, go ahead, man. We're going to pass it through this, and this is all done arthroscopically. Right? And we're going to tag it, cover that with that, to kind of put a patch over it, like duct tape. That's what I tell patients. Works, yeah, duct tape works good. pretty good. Go ahead, next. So this patient is six weeks out um, from a graft augmentation. He's moving a little bit more probably than he should be. Go ahead. It's a video. Okay. So we are six weeks out from a rotating I'm talking right now. We're like having a big conversation. I'm asking if he has any pain. Which shoulder was it? I think he came in without a sling. I, that would be like, like, I'm like, what are you doing? Right here? <laughs> now, I wouldn't say this is every patient. This guy, you know, when I saw this, I'm like, I got to put you in the my talk. So. Which side did you do? You tell me. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. That's internal rotation is the key. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So six to eight weeks in a sling, depending on tissue quality and what I do. Um, we progress range of motion, and that's where the patient does. You have to do therapy with the therapist. We have some therapists here, and you know they know my protocol. Um, we have our own therapists at Lakeshore, but we use other therapists too in the area that are uh, awesome. So I appreciate the quality. Um, we progress strengthening with time and then full activity, depending, four to 12 months, I tell patients. You know, if you're a, if, I, I pretty much tell everybody it's six months, but it's give or take. Full recovery, like if you were a laborer, you gotta get back to job, working at, you know, building homes, minimum usually six months. Just plan on that. It's not this. Shoulder surgery is not for scissors, tell show. At least rotator cuffs are going next. So difficult tears, like we mentioned, massive tears, retracted tears, re-tears, poor tissue quality. You get in there and the tissues like, you know, your favorite t-shirt, it's nice and thin, you can see through it, you know, you want to throw it, you know, your spouse wants to throw it away, but you keep finding it in the garbage, you put it back on. So and then if you know they're diabetic, smokers, and those things, and obviously patients age and activity we have to take into play. You know, if you're 80 and you want to throw a hundred mile fastball, we can't we can't fix that. So but, so what do we do for them? You know, we add we can add graphs. We can do bone marrow, we can stim you know, use some bone marrow from you to help stimulate healing, and then we can slow down the post-op protocol. Next. Um, so some tears are just not repairable, no matter what we do. There's nothing, I don't have anything in my toolbox that I can <coughs> fix that tendon with. So one option is just don't do surgery. You know, how bad is it? Can you live with it? Um, there are tendon transfers we do where we move tendons, but when you steal from Peter to pay Paul, you're, you know, you're compromising. It's a give and take, and whether it's worth it. We can do shoulder replacements, and we're going to talk about the reverse shoulder and a regular shoulder, and then we can also do what's called a superior capsular reconstruction. It's a big word. We just say SCR, 
but essentially we are going to keep the head from move, pushing up and just push it down with a capsule. And it, it doesn't build strength, but it helps pain relief and function. Okay, so it's rebalancing the shoulder without the rotator cuff. We can show you that. Um, and then we can add all these <coughs> grafts and patches if necessary. So this is a shoulder that's not repairable. This is the tendon here. This is, it needs to come way over here. It's like three to four centimeters retracted. I can't pull it over. It just won't come over. You know, we, we can do releases. We can try to do all these things, but it isn't coming over. So what do I do? I just I can scrub out. You know, ten years ago I would scrub out and say I can't. It's not fixable. We're gonna have to put a shoulder replacement in. But this is a younger person. He doesn't want a shoulder replacement. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an SCR. We're going to put a bunch of anchors in, and we're going to put in some cadaver tissue, and we're going to make him almost like a new rotator cuff. So these are the anchors going in. There's a lot of them. That's the patch. It's very thick. It's thicker than the other patch we used. And we're going to set it over that space. So that's covering that hole. And what it does is it keeps the ball from riding up. So the ball stays centered in the socket, and this gentleman can use the rest of his muscles in the shoulder to lift the arm. Okay, so go ahead. And that's that's the patch as well. Right. So this is him. You could probably so he's six months out, but I wouldn't let him do lifting probably for nine months. So when you talk to those patients, you can't tell them they're going to be able to do everything they want to do. They're going to be back. You know, have this big graft in there. It's not normal. You have to have that conversation. So shoulder arthritis, uh, there's different types, obviously. There's osteoarthritis, inflammatory arthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis, traumatic arthritis if you were in an accident, you know, and you shattered the cartilage. Um, avascular when you don't get the blood supply and then a lot of times there's a combination you could have rheumatoid and regular osteoarthritis um, and then you could have arthritis with the rotator cuff so you have to know all this and what you're getting your hands you know getting into before you have that discussion with the patient next <clears throat> so this is a patient who has osteoarthritis <coughs> you can see the ball and socket joint are wore out this patient doesn't have that bad of arthritis but if you look the ball is rubbing on the Top, the acromion, so that this patient, just by the x-ray, I can't see, you know, without an MRI, I can't see rotator cuffs, I can't see tendons and ligaments and muscles, but I can tell you, if that ball is touching there, that tendon's torn. I can tell just by that. So this patient has a ro massive rotator cuff tear. And this patient has, it looks like avascular necrosis, probably a little bit of arthritis, but more of the ball is messed up than the socket. Go ahead. So they can be treated differently. A lot of people don't know about rotator or about shoulders or shoulder replacements because everyone knows someone who had a knee replaced. Everyone knows probably someone who has a hip replaced, but a lot of people don't know about shoulders. So it's it's the third most common joint replacement, okay? But it's way down on the third. Like knees and hips are done left and right. Shoulders aren't because you don't walk on your arms, and if you have if you have a bad left shoulder, you can always reach and grab with your right. You know, you know. So, um, my I can tell you, my uncle's passed, but he had he had god awful shoulders, and and if you watch someone who has a rotator cuff tear, they can't reach out to grab something. They kind of do this. I call it snaking. They snake their arm up, and he would do that. So what I would do at holidays is he'd ask, Hey Tony, can you grab me some coffee? And I'd hand it, and he'd be like this, and then I'd just keep stepping back because his arm would drop. You know, and I'm like, hey. <laughs> so. Yeah, come on, we fix it. But anyways, so so this is a, this is an important slide because I think you know we all do knee, a lot of orthopods do knee replacements, okay? But a, a lot of people do shoulder replacements, but they don't do a lot of them. And that my that's my point to this. You 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 need to really investigate. You know, you should ask. You know, you buy a car, you, you're looking into the car, but you should know your surgeon too, and you're letting them put you. You're going to be asleep. You're going to operate on you. You're going to wake up. I mean, you should you should investigate who's who's operating on you. Just that's FYI. Go ahead. So this patient has advanced arthritis. 
we we do conservative care, right? I don't say a patient doesn't come in and say, hey, I want surgery. I, I'm not doing anything. I just want to be cut on. Or, you know, that makes me nervous. So I say, let's try some stuff first. You know, you know. So go ahead. So standard shoulder pro protocol. These are your options. So conservative management, and these are things you can think about doing. Uh, debridement. Go in there with a scope and kind of clean it out. You may consider that in a young patient who's a heavy laborer, maybe in their 40s, and you're worried because it's metal and plastic you're putting in, that could wear out, right? And the younger you are, the faster you're going to wear it out. It's like giving your 20-year-old your brand new Cadillac. He's, you know, you know, I remember my dad had a Lincoln Continental, I got my license, I was going up and down Airport Road at about 100 miles an hour. You know, anytime I could jump tracks, I would. You know, you're 80 years old, metal and plastic, you know, it's not going to wear out. So you got to keep that in mind. So you got to be careful when you're doing that. There are some studies that say that cutting the biceps and moving it can give some pain relief. Um, Say with the capsular release, and then the bottom one is shoulder replacement. So these are discussions we have. I don't discuss all of these with everyone. It really is more age appropriate. Um, so the number one goal for shoulder replacement is pain relief. Okay, of all the surgeries, I think. If you have a bad shoulder, and I'm talking not rotator cuff, I'm talking shoulder replacement, and you have your shoulder replaced, and your pain is significant enough the day before, that next day you notice a difference. It's probably the most rewarding of the surgeries that I do, and pain relief, even like the next day. I'm not saying you don't have pain, but they know it's a different pain. Patients will say, it's a different pain. Not everybody, but they'll say it's a different pain. This pain is different, I, I can tolerate it, I know the arthritis is gone. It's pretty amazing. Number two is improved range of motion. Okay, we don't guarantee it. Your body has, your muscles have memory, and if for 20 years you've been lifting your arm this high, even in surgery, if I get it up all the way, the next day your muscles are like, uh, -uh I just, I like this area. This is where I want to stay. So you have to work on that. But we do get, you know, I tell patients, I think we can improve some of your motion. I can't guarantee how much, but function. And then strength, um, it doesn't really necessarily improve strength, it more improves less pain, so you're willing to do more, if you will. So this is a shoulder replacement, you know, uh, this is a stemmed shoulder replacement. This is a stemless, and that's what John was talking about. Um, when did it come out? 20? It launched in... Uh, 2018? 20... State, state, state side, 2019. Yeah, so 2019, we were able to do this in the United States. I went to a talk in 20, 2009, and, right. and I'm like, that, that's a game changer there. And I had to wait till 2019 to do it. So I, you kind of knew about it, but they had to make sure everything was perfect. And um, It's been a game changer. You're like, well, why does it matter? Well, traditionally, these stems were even longer than this, and they were cemented in. So God forbid you broke this, or you got an infection, or it, it needed to be revised, you gotta get that stem out. And that's a big deal. That's breaking the bone, doing, I mean, it's a big deal. If this has to come out, you can just pull that out, essentially. So it's a whole different world. So, and that, the recovery, it's less trauma to the bone. I think it's a faster recovery. Um, patients do very well. I've been very happy with it. Right next. So, shoulder replacement. Um, can be done as an outpatient. We're doing an outpatient. People go home the same day. Whether it's done at a surgery center or at the hospital, we send them home the day, same day. You're in a sling. Less pain than a rotator cuff surgery, without question. It's not even, it's, it, that's for sure. Pain management, minimal narcotic use. We have a good protocol. We give meds before surgery, in surgery, after surgery, help with pain. We do blocks. You're in a sling for roughly six weeks. Formal therapy, three to four months, and then resume activities in three to four months. And then any joint replacement, it's usually a year. And I tell people that's when you, you maximize your potential. You might be 80% at three months, but that last 20% will take a year. So this is a gentleman six weeks out. Six weeks, seven weeks out. So he just came out of the saloon this, that day.
so the reason we do a reverse is someone who has doesn't have a repairable cuff and maybe it's not a great uh, candidate for the capsular repair <coughs> someone who has uh, no cuff with arthritis and then what we're, what we're doing, we're essentially rebalancing the shoulder. We're putting the deltoid under tension so that the shoulder can lift the arm and move. So instead of having the rotator cuff do the job of keeping the shoulder balanced, you're counting on other muscles as well as the implant. And you'll see it, it's called the reverse for a reason, okay? Main goal again, pain, pain control, improved motion, and improved strength. Strength's not improved, but you're rebalancing the tissue so the, the muscles can work properly. So this is the, that x-ray before the ball's riding high. So I see this. If I put a normal shoulder replacement in this person, it's, they're going to be exactly how they are now because they don't have a rotator cuff. The regular rotate shoulder replacement I showed you earlier needs a rotator cuff. This patient doesn't have one, so this would fail. I'd be in trouble if I did that. Right. So this is a reverse. If you notice, it's backwards. The ball and socket are backwards. Right? So this is so the patient who does not have a rotator cuff um, can use their own. And so this can also be same thing, outpatient, <coughs> limited narcotics, sling, you know, four to six weeks, and then therapy, full recovery, about 12 months. Um, so this is where I want to talk about um, what John mentioned. We use a, what makes the system I use different than other systems is we do preoperative planning. We all, I would hope every surgeon does preoperative planning. And we didn't always get CAT scans when we started. You know, I'd always get x-rays. When I started doing these 20 years, um, we didn't do, we always get a CAT scan. We rely on the x-ray. But what we found is CAT scans get a little bit more information. Where you can see x-rays are two-dimensional, but when you look at a CAT scan, you can look in depth. You can see bone structure, and it really matters, and it has changed how patients do. So what we do is we get a CAT scan, we download the CAT scan on a system program, and I actually perform the surgery on your shoulder on the computer weeks before we have the surgery. So what happens is it allows me to pick certain implants for every patient. I did three of them today between pay. You know, I look at it, it takes about five minutes. I know what I'm doing. You know, I have it kind of down pat. Um, and then if something's weird on the shoulder, I'm like, okay, we need to step back. We need to call the patient and say, hey, your x-ray showed this, but your CAT scan showed something different. We need to, you know, like I've had patients who I thought was going to be a normal shoulder replacement, and I had to call them and say, we can't do we got to do a reverse on you. If I would have went in and thought I was doing a standard shoulder, we could have a bad outcome. So it just improves the accuracy without question of, in my hands, in anybody's hands, and then more importantly, it improves the patient's outcome. So... So this is what we get um, in the office. Um, I kind of go through this and then in the operating room, I'm making sure we look at these every time before every case um, and make sure that what I plan matches the plan right before we make incision and then intraoperatively it matches. So in, in my office, I'm putting this implant, the socket part of it, exactly where it needs to be. And I can change size, I can change angles. And then what happens when I say, okay, this is what I want, the system makes a guide. We get a guide. Go ahead. And this is what the guide. So um, right here, every single one of my patients, well, most of them get one of these. And this is their shoulder. This is the socket. Okay? So I get this. This is in the operating room with me. You can pass that around if you want. Um, and what that does is this guide we get fits that perfectly. So I use this guide in this part right here. I put it in your shoulder, and it matches my preoperative planning. It matches the stuff I did that I've been doing for 20 years to make sure I'm putting it in the right spot. Just make sure I'm hitting the bullseye every time. That's the goal. Go ahead. So that's it in the shoulder. We make sure it matches every time. So. These are all the, this is called the VIP plan. But these are all the options. This is a reverse. These, this is the same patient here. That's the same patient. This one is the old standard shoulder. Now they have the new stemless. This patient has a reverse and a normal shoulder with a stemless. So different options we have. So this is a lady 17 days out. Okay, so you both on the she had a reverse. Okay. 
So overall patient satisfaction, um, our main goal I say is relieve pain and then you know, restore your function to your patients. Uh, I think 99, well you know this is a quote, um, you know 99% of people wish to give some type of relief, it's not 100% obviously, um, but uh, a lot of them wish they had it sooner. Um, I, I think patients do better when they make the decision on their own and not me telling them what to do. But, um, so these are the questions that are important for the patients, you know, am I a good candidate for surgery? I can talk to you, I can say, yeah, you have a rotator cuff tear, you have arthritis, you have a rotator cuff tear and arthritis. Um, I can tell you what the x-rays show, I can tell you, you know, you conservative manage, but, but I'm not going to make the decision for you. Like I said, it's better um, uh, if you make it. Will insurance cover it? That's how our team can help you, you know, talk about those things. Um, we've gone over the outcomes, but we talk about it in the office. Um, there are there are complications. It's surgery. You know, there's bleeding, there's infection, there's a work around nerves and arteries. You know, if you are if you have health issues, all that comes into play, and that's important to talk about. You need to talk to your family about it too. You know, you're going to need help at home. A lot of patients come in and say, "I want surgery. Um, do you have help at home?" No, no one can help me. Well, that's not a good. That's not ideal. You know, because you you're going to be in a sling. If you're right-handed and you're having right arm surgery, you know, there's things, I'm married, there's things my wife will do for me, there's things my wife ain't going to do for me. So, I think that's important, right? Well, I have pain, yes, but we're going to help you manage it, but yes, you're going to have pain. We're not going to give you a bunch of narcotics so you're all doped up for, you know, yeah, but you, you have to have pain, you're going to have pain, but it will slowly go away, you know. Um, how long is the recovery period? We can talk about it, it depends on the surgery. Um, like the help, you know, you need to talk to you. This is not just a one person decision. I think it's a group decision. Those people, people who plan, just like anything else, whether you're a coach, right, coaching football or basketball or whatever, people that win have planned, already planned on it, right? Planned everything out, you know? We, uh, how long are restrictions? So we'll go over all those. You know, if you have metal in your shoulder, you might have more permanent restrictions than you would have if you just had a rotator cuff. Um, and when can we resume activities? And those things, you know, what do you like to do? I, I like to do woodwork. I like to, you know, golf. You know, those things we go over. Um, go ahead. But the most, you make the decision. I don't make the decision. I will help you talk to you about pluses and minuses of everything. But bottom line is you make the decision. You're the patient. That's the most important thing. And our goal is the same. Get you better, get you back enjoying life. Whether your sport is hanging out with your grandkids or your sport is going to the gym and lifting weights, <coughs> you know, I want you guys to enjoy life. That's what this is all about. So, thank you. Uh, are there questions?